living in dog feces? Extreme Compulsive Hoarding. TLC features some of the most absurd shows you could ever find on reality television. On Compulsive Hoarding, Buried Alive Show, we meet some insane hoarders who live in very risky and rather questionable conditions. These people are so filthy that even the professionals sent to help them clean their mess find a hard time getting the job done. In some cases, they've opted to have the house taken down instead due to the intense biohazard conditions. Today, we've picked out five cases that'll make you cringe in disbelief. They have in here that an infestation of insects, rodents, and vermin or other pets have been found at this property. Number five, a doctor's life has been taken over by his compulsive hoarding. This has got to be the most touching story I've seen on this show. Compulsive hoarder Simone moved to his house in Philadelphia after a contentious divorce over 30 years ago. He set up a home upstairs and did his medical practice downstairs. Simone tells the cameras that he's a retired orthopedic surgeon as they moved around his house. It was his passion and comprised of everything he was. Despite having a degree in medicine and another in pharmacy, his office looks nothing like it. He reminisces on days of how organized his office used to look and one could tell how passionate he was with his career. It's sad how Simone can't do anything due to his diabetes and limited vision. His hands also shake and feel like it's the end of the road for him. Everything in his home is nothing but a messy pile of unnecessary things. There's a severe roach infestation that seems to be out of control as roach feces are all over. Some of his greatest possessions was his collection of race cars. His kitchen is also a disaster with roaches roaming all over. He generally enjoys cooking, but no meal can be prepared in his kitchen due to the clutter. His daughter is concerned about his hoarding conditions as she terms the house not living livable, unhealthy, and disgusting. The bathroom is even worse, but the roast infestation makes everything seem… gross. He admits that his children have tried on several occasions to help him clean the house, but in return, he pushed them away. This was all about to change because he was given a 30-day notice to clean up his space or risk being kicked out. After his daughter explained the magnitude of the notice, it became clear that he needed to do something before things turned worse. Luckily, his daughter agreed to give him a hand with the cleaning because she bluntly explained to him that he was living like he was deceased since he had no life. However, she needed extra hands so her husband together with her sister-in-law were the extra hands to assist with the cleanup. Most of them had visited Simone's home for years, all with different memories of horrible things that followed after the visit. His daughter-in-law narrates that the last time Simone visited them, he left a full cockroach infestation at her home. When they got home, they were shocked by the condition of his house, as it was far worse than what they'd expect to find. When her daughter Jessica requested Simone to show the guests the spice rack, I was even shocked. Cockroaches just started flying out all over the place. Her daughter-in-law was more shocked about the conditions and felt that his living conditions were extremely hazardous. He just stood there sad, really felt pity for the old man. Using money from their retirement savings, much of the twins' purchases were new. Number 4. Identical Twins Risk Losing Their House Phyllis and Patty aren't just identical twins, they're identical twin hoarders. They've transformed every home in which they've ever lived into a complete disaster zone. When they show the cameras their living room and bedroom, the whole situation is just gross. It looks like a large pile of junk and random clutter around the space with most of the items they barely have use for. The twins say it's been years since they even saw the floor, but they have no issue with it since they don't even like the carpeting. Some of these items are still in their packages, but might end up deteriorating just like the other stuff. I really don't know much, no really, just that they was his. I don't know. Since they've been together all their lives, hoarding becomes a norm and toxic addition they've both adapted. For over four decades, the two have developed a culture to go shopping and purchase random stuff. Their kitchen is stuffed with random items that make no sense wasting their retirement money. However, when they get deeper into how all this started, we find out that their elder brother passed away at a very young age while serving in the army. This created a void between the girls who lived a normal life until this tragedy happened, causing a downward spiral in their lives. Evidently, this took a huge toll on them since they still keep his clothes neatly hanged and it's probably the only segment in the house they care about. The two let the hoarding take over their lives and ended up getting fired from the local bakery. Further than that, this toxic behavior cost them their home as well since they were evicted and the town tore down the home after several complaints from neighbors. Their current home is facing a similar fate. They were given a notice to evacuate or clean up the place in 30 days. Sadly, their pets are also put at risk with the bad living conditions they've been subjected to. Somebody save those cats, please. What do they do to you? They scare me. The mice scare you? And what else? They bite me. Number 3. Friend is shocked at how this woman has been living. Denise is left bankrupt, 
and without an inch to spare at her house. To complicate matters further, her tenants have reached the end of their rope and will no longer tolerate the smell and vermin infestation that has invaded the building. Her tenant tells the cameras that she's very disappointed with her landlord Denise, since they're forced to keep their stuff in containers, and can't enjoy their home as they should due to constant mice infestations. She even shares that one room in her house has been converted into a storage unit. Sadly, she thinks the basement is the only infested area, but Denise has more shocking revelations. Her tenant isn't aware that her landlord's home is as filthy as the basement she dreads. Oh my god. So you have to go sideways. Far worse than anyone could even think. Denise is ashamed of her hoarding condition, especially after finding out her tenant's daughter has been a victim of rat bites. They were scared they would develop more complicated diseases and even threatened to move out. To get things off her chest and let things be out in the open, Denise decided to reveal her secret to her neighbor, who has also been a great friend. She opened up about her hoarding conditions, which have worsened with time and hasn't been able to lead a normal lifestyle. Her neighbor understood why Denise never invited her to her home despite having a close relationship. Immediately, they stepped into Denise's house and she couldn't believe her eyes. Everything was a huge mess and the place was infested with all kinds of pests. The guest was even shaken by how Denise managed to sleep in the house. The most shocking of all was the bathroom. It was enough to make anyone gag due to the filth that was all over the place. The walls were dirty and the sink was also filled with filth. It makes you wonder how she cleans up in the first place. If her tenant was to see this, I'm pretty sure the place would be shut down by now. You know who? Mm -hmm. Cough, cough, laugh out loud. Uh, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Number two, team refuses to clean biohazard house full of dog feces. Beverly is one of the most difficult hoarders to ever grace the show. This woman wasn't ready to let her things go and would cling on to every item despite it not being a value. When she got a team to help her clean the space, everyone was lost for words with the type of filth they collected from Beverly's home. There was a broken fridge she hoped to return for a refund that smelled like it was carrying something deceased. Inside it was all sorts of expired food. This seemed to be the bragging rights of the home. Rotten food everywhere is one of the most difficult hoarders to ever grace the show. They found abandoned pizza and stale food, but one of the thing that had them almost vomiting their guts out was a cracked rotten egg. The funny part was that the whole team had their noses covered apart from Beverly, who took it so casually. The floor covered in dog feces wasn't helping either. As much as the team tried their best to get rid of the pile of junk, Beverly insisted that she couldn't trust them and wanted to go through the trash to confirm all the stuff they had thrown away. This ruined the team's morale, who seemed to have been doing a great job getting rid of the clutter. Since there was already enough chaos going on on the ground floor, some of the team members decided to check the situation on the top floor. Oh boy, were they shocked. They couldn't hold back the urge to vomit due to the disgusting fresh dog feces and termed it as a biohazard. They needed a special unit to handle such situations. Beverly was offended that they were refusing to take on her house, claiming she'd do it herself. But wait a minute, lady. If you had everything under control, why not do it in the first place? <laughs> Number 1. Lifeless Cat Found in Darlene and Doug's Home Of all the filth you can find in someone's house, discovering that this couple was hoarding their pet's lifeless body for over two years is disgusting. Darlene and Doug make Beverly above seem like a better hoarder. This place was rubbish from all levels. The carpet was also rotting from below. A company specialized in hazardous waste were given the task to analyze their home. The couple had stored over two decades of clutter, so scary that the team opted to double glove and wear extra protective gear just to make sure the filth doesn't get on them. The team was more concerned about the exposure to human feces that carry plenty of bacteria, causing dangerous bacterial infections including hepatitis. However, Darlene was more concerned about her belongings than safety. She was crushed when she found out she couldn't salvage most of her fabric since it had to get the mold out of the fabric. The team was told to throw away anything covered in human waste or cat waste or even mold. You will not degrade me! No! 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 You could see how their faces just changed in disgust. As much as the team had geared up, the damage was more than they assumed. When they lifted the carpet from the floor, it showed how contaminated the house really was. The whole floor had soaked through and they couldn't even touch it with their hands. Most of the items in the house were either disintegrated or rotten. When they found the body of their lifeless cat, that's when things got real. Imagine living all those years with a horrible stench and not noticing there was something like that in a pile of rubbish. You could tell they were really embarrassed and tried to get things right by burying their beloved pet in the garden. But the psychologist thought they had extremely neglected collected every aspect of their lives, including their animals. This finding provided a welcome call they desperately needed to get their lives in order. Luckily, the couple was finally open to the idea of parting with a majority of the clutter in their home and vowed to turn a new leaf from there on.